In this problem, we are asked to figure out the moment that each of these forces, F1, F2, and F3, produce around point B. And we need to remember the equation we have for a moment. So the magnitude of a moment is equal to the magnitude of a force times the perpendicular distance that force is from the point we are taking our moment about. And what we want to do is we want to look at each of these forces individually, F1, F2, F3, figure out what each of their moments are. So let's start with force F1. When we look at force F1, F1 is in this XY plane. So this right here will be my positive X direction. This going up will be my positive Y direction. And X is, has a X and Y component. So what we need to do is we actually need to break this up and we need to look at what my F1X is and what my F1Y is. So when you have a force that is in the XY plane, you need to break it up into its components. Then you need to look at what each of the component, the moment that each of those components produce around whatever point you're looking at, in this case, point B. And then you add them together to get the moment that the entire force is at. So we are going to break this up into components. We're going to look at what F1X does first. And what I'm going to do, because this is still relatively new, is I'm going to draw a line that shows the location of where this force points. So this extends into infinity. And eventually, you won't need to draw the line. You'll be able to do this in your head. But since it's new, let's just continue to draw the line. And I'm going to move this force. And I'm going to make it a little thicker so we can see it. But I'm going to move this force so it's in line with point B. Now, when I move this force and it's in line with point B, we have a perpendicular distance. This becomes my perpendicular distance, D. This D is equal to 4. So now I can look at my moment equation. I can say that the moment about point B, and we're working with force F1. So the moment about point B, and I'm going to do everything in the counterclockwise direction. We'll get to that in a minute. Is going to be equal to the magnitude of this force. Well, the magnitude, we need to figure out this X component. It's going to be 250 times, well, now we need the sine of 30. So 250 times the sine of 30, that's this F, times this perpendicular distance, which is 4. And we're not just done yet. So now we need to rotate about point B. And as we rotate, this is going to rotate tail first. So it's actually going to be a negative sign. If this is still confusing to you, rotating moments about points, please check out my previous video. I have some animations that will hopefully make this make more sense. And as I rotate about points, what's considered a negative moment when it rotates tail first and what's considered a positive moment when it rotates head first. So in this case, this is rotating tail first around point B. So it's a negative moment. All right, so this is my F1X. I need to do the same thing with F1Y. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide F1Y down. So it's in line with FB. And now this is the shortest or perpendicular distance that I have. And this has a distance of three meters. If I rotate my force about point B, well, now I know this one is actually going to rotate in the, it's going to be rotating head first. So it's going to be positive. So I'm going to have plus, well, the magnitude of this force, I need the cosine. So 250 times the cosine of 30 times that perpendicular distance, which is three. And I can now put this in my calculator. So when I put this in my calculator, I have the following output. I get this is equal to 149.5 Newton meters. Now, since this is a positive number that we have, the sense of the moment, we had assumed we were rotating everything in this counterclockwise direction, and that was true. So this is actually 
a moment that's produced in that counterclockwise direction. If it had been negative, all that meant is the magnitude would be correct, but it would be switched. It'd be in the clockwise direction. All right, so let's clean this up a bit. Get rid of that. All right, so it should be good now. All right, now we need to look at what's happening with force two. And we got to do the same thing. We need to break it up into a Y component, which goes down. We need to break it into an X component, which points to the left. And we need to look at each of those components individually. So this is F2. And you know, this time let's rotate it in the clockwise direction. So this is gonna be my moment about B. And let's do F2Y first. When we do F2Y, we first extend and when we extend it, we see it goes right through point B. Because it goes through point B, there will be no perpendicular distance. This right here will be zero. Since it's zero, that means that the F2Y has produces no moment about point B. So we have zero for F2Y. Now let's look at F2X. Well, it's already really close so this perpendicular distance is going to be this four. Now the magnitude of F2X is going to be uh, 300 times the cosine of 60 times this perpendicular distance, which is four. And now we're rotating in the uh, clockwise. So as we rotate clockwise, we see that it's going to rotate clockwise in this negative sense. So tail first, which means negative. Again, if this is confusing, please check out my previous video. I've put the link in the video. Uh, it hopefully will help you understand this rotation business. So we have minus 300 times the cosine of 60 times four. And this gives me a value of minus 600. So this is equal to minus 600 Newton meters. This minus sign, and this is what I was talking about before, this minus sign, all that meant is this was not the way that, uh, the quote incorrect way of rotating it. The This is going to be equal to 600 Newton meters that's rotating in this direction. Now, if you had rotated this and you had said counterclockwise, you would have got 600 Newton meters without the minus because this would have rotated and this would have been a positive. But ultimately, your final answers will be the same. The, you'll get a magnitude and a direction of the moment. Now let's look at F3. When we look at F3, we, F3 is really easy. We see that F3 goes completely through point B. So F3 has no moment. The moment about point B is equal to zero. And if maybe we didn't see that right away, if we break this up into components, okay, this is F3X, this is F3Y. Well, right there, we see both those points also go through point B. So they'll have no perpendicular distance. So we have the moment about point B is zero. Hopefully this video has helped you with taking moments about a point in 2D. If it has been helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video because it will help get my content out to more people who may need help with this type of topic.